Welcome to Dust Geek. So today I want to share something with you, and this is not in any way to to uh, show my brilliance, but in fact show the brilliance of the Linux community uh, out there. And this, I mean, it, it's basically a hodgepodge of work from forums and other things to get this bash script together and work that other more brilliant minds have created that I put together to work for me. But I thought for a lot of you who are uh, newer intermediate within Linux, you may not have thought to create a bash script to do all of your installs for you. And I've put one together of the main applications that I use. I'm going to show you how it works. I think it's a lot of fun. And on the Destination Linux podcast, which I'm one of four hosts on, it's an amazing podcast. It also has a YouTube channel. Definitely go check it out if you want more stuff to fill your brains with. And we just had Daniel Foray from Elementary OS. We do interviews. We discuss Linux news over there as well. We distro hop a lot. And because of that, it can get uh, pretty tedious to go in and install all the applications that we use for podcasting, for video creation every single time. So that's why I kind of created this install script. And we're probably going to keep improving upon it and eventually call it the official Destination Linux uh, Distro Hopper script. But in any case, this is the work of many people, not just myself, but wanted to show it. Uh, as a fantastic and easy way to really install software. So you go to my GitHub page and you can go and click and download uh, the script here and you can go before you download it and look into the actual code itself and see all the programs that will be listed out. And it's gonna create a nice little menu uh, for you that you can select which ones you want. You can see all these are off by default. If you were to change it to on, then it would automatically install when you run the script. And it installs a lot of the dependencies and things that you would need for things for these programs here. So what you do is just go to clone or download. We're going to download the zip file and we'll just go ahead and save it. So I can kind of show you guys a uh, real simple manual way if you're not super comfortable with the terminal that you can do this. So now that we have this saved, uh, it's gonna come here as a zip file. So we'll just go ahead and unzip it and extract this file. We can extract it into our downloads, it's fine. So that's extracted. And now what we have is this folder here. And the only thing we really need in the folder, you could check out the readme is this install script. So we're gonna grab this and I'm just gonna move it here. And this is just gonna make it easier for us in the terminal. Of course, you could drag and drop it to the terminal. So we'll go ahead and open our terminal here. And what we're gonna do is navigate to the downloads folder. So we're just gonna change directory to downloads. You can type ls to see what's in there. We have that install script. So what we're gonna do is first right click on this file and we'll make it executable. You could also type in the chmod command, but I wanna keep this as simple as possible for those who are not super familiar uh, with utilizing the terminal. So you're gonna have all these tabs over here, but we need permissions and allow executing file as a program. Um, you could do chmod plus x in the file name if you want or something like that, but that's an easy way to do it through the GUI here. And we need to give it sudo writes to run and then we're just gonna do sudo install script. And so we're doing sudo space period slash install script. And that's going to run this bash script. It's going to ask us for our sudo password because it's going to need that to install anything just like you normally would. It's going to run an update and an upgrade. So depending if you've done an update or upgrade recently, that's going to take some time. So now we can start selecting things. So I'm just going to hit my space bar, my arrow keys, install flat packs. I want sublime, simple note, gedit, terminator, which is a terminal uh, access GUI. FileZilla, Zoom meeting client, we definitely need Telegram. We'll go ahead and grab, we don't need elementary tweaks or Ubuntu restricted extras necessarily. SM player, don't need the GNOME tweak tool here. Google Chrome, Vivaldi, we already have Firefox. We can do GIMP, OBS, Caden Live, GNOME boxes, VirtualBox, Atom, Putty, Steam of course, uh, Pia VPN, this one's in testing. This is for the Pia VPN GUI. The one I've selected is for the network manager. I haven't been able to get the GUI to function in it. So if you want to take a look at the script and know how, you can make a commit to it. But I haven't been able to get the GUI to function uh, just yet through the installer. Lutris, uh, Hexchat, Shotwell, Cheese, Audacity, GovC View for webcam settings, Pit Host for my Pandora. We don't need GNOME Shell, we don't need GNOME Do search tool. We could do Discord, 
if you have Google Music Player, you can see I put that just for one of the hosts. Uh, Destination Linux utilizes that, Rocco, and just click OK. So now it's going to go install with minimal interactions required, and lots of improvements could be made to this script, but it's still a lot of fun to run, and it's a very much easier way than going through the store and hunting for apps individually, etc., to set up a bash script for the programs that you use on a regular basis, and it will go through, it will download uh, the files for them, and again, you could look through the code and see if there are PPAs or things that you don't want to use or you want to change it to another one. Uh, you can certainly go do that and edit it for your personal needs. But so far it's been tested in elementary OS, Ubuntu 18.04, Ubuntu 17.10, and now Mate. So really anything Debian uh, based is probably gonna work just fine here. Okay, so you got the fast forwarded version of that, but once it's done, it'll just simply stop. And you can see there's just a couple points where you have to interact with it. For instance, to enter your PIA VPN, username, etc. But now if I go up here into network settings and go to VPN connections, I have all of my PIA VPN options here and would just need to enter my password if I want to connect. If I go into menu and in all now, we can see these programs that I installed. Atom, Audacity, some of the ones that we selected here, Discord from Snap, FileZilla here, Firefox uh, was already pre-installed. We've got GIMP, Google Chrome, GovC View, HexChat, Caden Live, all of these programs that we selected our Lutris are now installed for us. We didn't have to go through any of the interfaces to manually select them. And so now that we have sublime text and those type of things, let me show you how this install script, let's just take a look at it through sublime text so I can show you some of the ways that you can edit this in case you're not familiar with bash scripting at all. So we'll make this full screen. So you can see up here, the script's gonna tell you if you try to run it without sudo that you need that in order to run this it's going to run an apt get update and apt uh, get upgrade minus or the minus y command here is going to automatically basically move past the dialogue that would ask you do you want to install this yes uh, so it's going to go ahead and do that for you so you don't have to enter that in here is your menu so this section here generates your menu and you could just keep adding below to this item here and then we're just putting in here the name of the program and then off or on. If you want, any option could be set default to on if you want it to automatically install when you run this script. <clears throat> Down here are the individual programs. Um, this was just a way for me to add these to the beginning without having to reformat everything out of laziness. So we wanted to add Flatpak and Snap repositories as an option before the first one that I did, which was Sublime Text. And then simple note, and you can see this is just using a wget command to go get the files that we need. It's adding the keys, it's installing the file. Uh, after that, the same thing here, if it's something that's already within the software repositories that you could just type apt install in the name of the program, then you could just put that simple command there. If it's something you have to get on the internet, it gets a little more sophisticated. So you can read through these, but at the bottom, if you were to add a new item to the menu, you would then add it right below this item here, and you want to keep this ESAC done in Phi uh, in there as the closures to this program. And that's really it. It's pretty simple script that definitely recommend you customize on your own. And again, this is from the work of other brilliant people that I've just taken little bits and pieces from uh, from different forums and been able to incorporate it into this view here. There are many scripts like this that use a similar menu. Most of them I found were more system administrator based, but I thought this is a great distro hopper tool as well. So I hope this helps. I think it's a lot of fun to play with. Definitely something you could download and make your own. I've had a lot of fun uh, sharing it with some folks who are also distro hopper addicts and uh, it certainly helped to make their installs and switches over uh, even faster. And there are other options you can do as well uh, to get your software over, such as you know setting these repositories up on a network, et cetera. But this is an easy way uh, that I had fun with. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains.